So uh, today is, I think, September 21st, and this is the truck I've been working on. To replace my one that got stolen, I don't know if I'd showed it in videos or not. Crew cab so I can haul my kids. Long bed so I can haul tools. Dually one ton so I can haul hay and hopefully a tractor if I can ever afford a gooseneck trailer. Uh, I built this engine. Uh, I freshened up this engine. I put my cylinder heads on it, put a cam in it, put that intake on it. Uh, and all the fancy chrome stuff, uh, it is not for show. And the reason what I mean by that is I bought this truck. I got a really good deal off of, on it on somebody from somebody I knew. They took the motor out of it and the transmission and everything along with it and put that package in a dump truck. I mean, I didn't even have hood bolts. I had no bolts. No bolts, no radiator, nothing for the front of the engine, you know, what have you. Uh, didn't have headers, whatever. <clears throat> so... All this chrome stuff is literally the cheapest stuff you can buy on eBay. Uh, it's like a $60 alternator, $100 set of pulleys. The intake, it's not the cheapest one you can get. But it's pretty close. Uh, I did splurge on a new carburetor. That's not in the uh, in the picture here, obviously. Uh, but I already had the distributor. I didn't have valve covers, headers, like I said. Um, believe it or not, this power steering pump over here it's a brand new Saginaw pump, chrome housing, whatever. Um, it was $42 cheaper to get the chrome one uh, than anywhere I could find just a stock one. So, you know, a lot of people look at it like, oh, yeah, you got it chromed out. Nice job. Looks great. Well, it's not really why it's there. I mean, it's cool. Like, I appreciate the fact that the cheaper stuff was the chrome stuff, but... Uh, chrome timing cover, it was like $17, came with bolts, didn't have any bolts, sounds good to me. Um, but I've got about maybe seven, 800 miles on it now, and it doesn't have the low end that I need it to have at all. Uh, so it might be big, nice, and shiny looking, but that is only a 305. Why? Because that's what I could afford. I did splurge on some paint. It's the first one. I've built several small block Chevys. First one I've ever painted. Got my dual electric cooling fan set up again. Cheapest stuff you find on eBay. Because I didn't have a fan. Um, and I might switch it to a regular fan and do away with electric. It depends on how it works after our power adder. Well, you'll get to see the power adder here in a minute. And figure out what I'm doing and why I'm taking a brand new looking engine apart. And we'll go from there. Right. Well, this engine's been getting hot. And I couldn't figure out why, because for the first week I drove it, it ran cold. Because I have these cooling fans wired to go on 100% of the time as long as the engine's running. And then all of a sudden, uh, it decided that it wanted to run hot. Now in the middle of your screen, you'll see in that orange cylinder head, the center port has black around it, going down into under the intake, as does this side. Uh, that is an EGR crossover, exhaust gas recirculation crossover. Um, yeah, it's leaking. It was leaking, blowing exhaust straight down into the engine which also explains the uh, excessive amount of blow-by I've been having, um, which I thought was an internal engine issue. Uh, I guess, you know, I don't like to find, you know, I don't like to see that. I, I, I mean, I'm not happy that I found something wrong with the engine that I put together, but uh, oh, you can't see over there. Yeah, it's it's nighttime. We just got back from bail and ate some supper. And, uh yeah, you can see the black line. Um, you know, I didn't look at the gasket. I just threw them out. Uh, well, because I don't like to climb in and out of the truck. I'm sitting on the radiator. But uh, I don't like to find stuff like that. But like I said, it does alleviate some issues. In fact, if I was th thinking that I had like extreme blow-by and this engine really was wore out. Because I never pulled the pistons. I cleaned the cylinder walls with the, with the ball hone lightly. To take any glaze or maybe uh, had a couple cylinders had like very 
light rust from this engine sitting. I put my cylinder heads on it, uh, put a new camshaft, new crank and rod bearings, called it a day. Painted it up, stuck it in the truck, and it's turd. Uh, it's not going to be a turd when I'm done with this video, um, but just wanted to share the fact that I am back working on it uh, after baling hay. It's not really that late, it's just the time of year it's getting dark by 8 o'clock. So it's September 21st. I just can't believe these exhaust crossovers. Uh, and that's the second time I've ever had that happen with an Aldebrock intake. Now the first time it ever happened, uh, see there's th this large boss here between the two, that's where the exhaust gas crossed over. I had one crack, you know, right there in the middle one time. Um, I don't know if that's from taking it on and off too many times or or what, but um, this displeased with the fact I used uh, a brand new gasket, brand new intake manifold, brand new bolts, and followed the torque specs that came with the manifold. Um, not the factory torque specs. So I'll cut that part, this part of the video off short because uh, it's already long enough and this isn't the big bang part of the surprise uh, power adder. Alright, so if you can tell what kind of intake manifold that is, maybe you'll already have an idea of what I'm doing here. I'm not doing a step by step because the instructions that come with what I'm putting on this truck are straightforward and very clear. Um, they give you all the torque specs, sequences, what to do, what not to do, uh, in bold caps, you know, it's really good instructions uh, for a Wyand product. Also, you know, owned by Holly, but so it's late, it's probably 11 o'clock or midnight, uh, probably closer to midnight, I don't think it's later than that, but I've worked all day, I am tired, I'm going to keep going because as my wife says, uh, I'm a workaholic, so uh, yeah, you'll get to see what I'm bolting on here, uh, here in just a second. Alright, now we can see what we're doing here. We're getting closer uh, to firing this thing up. Carburetor, a few lines and wires. That is a Wee End 144 uh, low profile supercharger. Uh, flow tested, guaranteed, uh, came with all the belts, pulleys, hardware, uh, yeah, it was pretty much a bolt-on, power adder, bolt-on power adder, so hopefully uh, here in a short second, uh, it'll be a second for you, but it might be an hour for me, who knows, we'll hear this thing fire up, so stick with us. can't rush perfection all right so right now we are getting ready to set our base timing um, obviously I've had this engine run before been driving it for a couple weeks uh, 38 degrees total timing the idle timing is 16 degrees advanced uh, we need to back that down to about 30 at the max until I get the air fuel sensor hooked up um, with the gauge and everything uh, that's just to play it safe and 30 to me honestly is still kind of a lot of timing when you're talking about boost um, I might try to go for six once we get it started but I'm not sure yet how it'll run at six degrees total timing or uh, uh, initial timing advanced Our, uh, lead on our good burnt wire because that that shoots in a spark. Actually, I'm gonna take it off of this up here. Anytime you're hooking up a timing light, you want it to be as close to the plug as possible, but also as isolated as possible from the other wires. So I don't know if I'm gonna achieve that or not. Yeah. Oh well. There we go, that's not too bad. Far enough away, that way it doesn't pick up on a false signal. You rolling? Yeah. Alright, so right now it is 
uh, running for its first time. Uh, when we tried to check initial timing, uh, it pretty much started, and I told her to set it off, and then uh, I said, well, if it's just going to run that fast, just turn it on. So I got it set roughly at like 6 degrees initial advance, something stupid low. Uh, just to see how it does. Once it gets up to operating temperature, we will uh, get the, uh, I guess, get the timing set and see how it does. All right, so she's running. I don't know if you can see in there. It's starting to get warm. <laughs> uh, yeah, it uh, doesn't have a whole lot of coolant in it. So I filled it up, but this this uh, coolant, oh yeah. This uh, thermostat I put in it is a high flow, but it doesn't have a check valve. It doesn't have like the little, I call it a bubbler, little jingler thing. It lets air through. So it's not actually gonna flow until it's up to temp. It actually opens, so that's why I'm like at least a half a gallon low on coolant. Seems to be doing okay um, for the time being. Uh, we've got an extremely rich smell out of the exhaust, and we don't have any vacuum when we hit the uh, put it into into gear. It still wants to die and stuff, and, uh, but. Let's we'll try to see what we can get done in the next few minutes. Alright, so now we are going to tune the carburetor idle only. We're not talking about jets, idle, keep the restriction, nothing. Idle only. It smells rich as a pig in the back. Uh, pay attention to that vacuum. You change your uh, idle settings to get the greatest achieved vacuum, and uh, that's where they're supposed to be. So let's turn them down. Oh, wow, that's in the thin all the way. I can't believe it took fuel. You just keep watching that gauge and as I turn the screwdriver. I turned it a whole bunch and it didn't change. There you go in until it starts to get diminished. That's the after minute. Turn it back up. Looks like 12's over and get out of this side. You always give it that rev like that to clear out any adjustment you've made and you move to the other side. Again, same thing, you're watching your vacuum gauge. Got your screwdriver on your uh, adjustment needle. And I'm going to uh, turn it open. Not getting any difference, so let's get back the other way. Until we see it dip. Yeah, it dip. That's a blower motor for you. Not much, because it's a small blower on a small engine. We come back to the same 12. Pretty steady. I'm okay with that. Now, hey, I'll tell you what. We're going to go see what the, uh, this is hooked up at the carburetor above the supercharger. We got a boost and vacuum gauge inside the truck and we'll go see what that's saying. Alright, so this is below the intake manifold, this boost gauge. Uh, we're looking at just under 12. Just under 12 because no matter what the supercharger is, um, you know, it is pushing some kind of air even if the throttle's shut. So that's good. That means this gauge is accurate and the other gauge is accurate. 